Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we have Mike Fison, who is the Regional Sales Director for ANZ uh, of Stratus. So Stratus is a software company focused on infrastructure solutions, especially for fault tolerant servers and virtualized edge servers. So uh, welcome to the jam, Mike. Thank you very much, Nick. And thank you for inviting me along to the Tech Day interview today. I appreciate that. Very, very big pleasure to have you. So um, what is Stratus currently working on in Australia? And particularly in sectors relating to the edge? Yeah, sure. Um, well, Stratus has sort of four main sectors within Australia and New Zealand, um, and the business, those businesses being industrial automation, uh, business management and access control, uh, travel and transport, and payments processing. And whilst the recent edge momentum is predominantly associated with industrial automation, um, it, it just the, it's very apparent that these other sectors are often deployed in remote locations away from data center data centers and away from cloud access so we classify those as, as the edge sectors as well so uh, in industrial in automation uh, we're seeing various steps in the digital transformation journeys of the organizations right through from virtualization which has been around a while to newer initiatives like the industrial internet of things uh, and the management around that. Uh, in virtualizations, we've seen plants consolidate their server and PC sprawl across the plant floor to move to a, you know, all eggs in one basket server type platform and Stratus provide that protection and simplicity in the management of it to, um, for that workload. Industrial IoT, which is a, you know, a new phenomenon is really increasing uh, the amount of data we're seeing and we're really seeing the need to implement these platforms at the edge to allow um, uh, quick access to plant specific decisions but also to present gateways to allow that data to be up sent up to the cloud for, for modeling and workflow in building security and, and management um, the stratus platform ensures you know door alarms and events are recorded and actioned uh, but as many of the buildings, such as correctional centers, are often in remote or uh, difficult to access areas, the, the platform needs to be very simple to manage and service as you, know, you don't have IT resources. Um, we're being involved in projects around uh, location tra tracking and automatic train control, where again, you know, an availability platform is essential for safe travel. Payments has been a traditional play for Strata, so going back over the 40 or 40 year history, um, and really the edge meant then the ability to control payment devices such as ATMs and FPOS terminals. Um, and, and really it was in a replacement for the predominantly IBM front end processors. So the edge has meant different things to different sectors, but it's been a uh, uh, you know, key to Stratus' platform decisions for the past 40 years. Yeah, so you mentioned a lot of sectors there. Um, what are some of the trends you've observed in these sectors uh, in Australia um, and kind of in the last 12 months? And what do you expect to see in the future? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, if I take each of those sectors, so industrial automation, I, I definitely see a movement towards a, a sort of a more holistic view of the plant's production process as they move from the islands of automation um, to implementing uh, modern uh, manufacturing execution, execution systems that sit above these islands of automation and um, you know, the, uh, allow for that associated data collection. The data or the information it provides is key to improving the, the productivity and the innovation. And, and the gateways that I mentioned to the cloud allow you to do that analytic analysis of that data to uh, further improve um, operational efficiency. So data is key and we'll see big data being sent to the cloud as being a a key way of modeling a better environment for these plants. Uh, edge devices not only need to be reliable and simple, as I've mentioned before, but they're operated by OT rather than IT people. And, um, but IT still plays a very uh, large role. You know, things like cybersecurity is certainly a growing concern um, and it needs to be implemented at the edge as well as the enterprise. So that's something that, um, you know, I also see as a, a you know a real need for the, the immediate and future time. And one of the trends we're seeing, for example, in, in, in building management and access control, we're certainly seeing virtualization becoming uh, more popular as you know 
we sit CCTV uh, alongside access control, alongside a, a duress type system. So all those applications now reside on the one platform and that system's obviously got to be reliable. One of our, one of our key partners um, globally and, and especially relevant to Australia and New Zealand is Gallagher Security Systems that um, uh, provide access control. And um, they, you know, one of the things we've seen them do over the past year is they've adapted their application to uh, manage the, the COVID-19 situation such that they can control using their application, how many people are in a room, making sure they are socially uh, distancing in their workstations. And um, that's you know, a good example of how they um, use their current application to adapt to a, you know, a, a, a fast moving um, event. You know, it's really a good example of um, how innovative and uh, they can uh, adapt their solutions to, to this current pandemic. We work with Siemens Mobility in Australia. They've implemented a, a GPS positioning solution on the Stratus platform to enable them to uh, the operator to accurately coordinate a train's movement, even what were previous black spots. Um, so that's, um, I think we'll see a lot more modernization, modernization in the rail sector with advancements like uh, automatic train control and driverless trains and the stations with the, the sliding doors on the platforms so that something certainly in, in rail and payments even though it's been sleeping in really in the in the area we are the payment switches um, i think we'll see a lot of modernization because these platforms have been there since the mid 80s and we will see things like fast faster payments and a move to consolidate these payment platforms with the atm and fpos control as we move to a, to a cashless society. Right, yeah. Um, and with digital transformation playing such a big part in IT these days, how does edge computing add value to help companies keep pace and embrace the changes that are coming and have come in the last 12 to 18 months? Yeah, no, thanks, uh, Nick. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we definitely see an industry 4.0 and, and digital transformation is certainly driving the, the revolution at the edge. Um, and that's really to harness the, you know, the, the value of all that rapid increase in, in real time data. Um, we, we saw a, a recent Gartner report stated that 75% of the data will be created and processed at the edge um, outside of the data center in the cloud. And uh, this is really sort of grown from 75% in 2022, they're predicting from 10% in 2018. So that's a rapid um, turnaround in processing data outside the uh, uh, data centers and cloud and moving it to the edge. This is having an impact on, on edge computing. Um, again, IDC stating that, you know, the compound annual growth rate of edge computing is about 24% over the next five years. And that 50% of that new IT infrastructure will be deployed at the edge by 2023. And that's up again from 10% in 2018. So these are very rapid um, changes um, that we're seeing that's caused by uh, industry 4.0 and, and the impact on edge. So um, edge computing, it certainly unlocks a lot of these industry 4.0 initiatives. Um, I mentioned industrial IoT and the ability to generate meaningful data uh, and give us a, you know, a better insight into the automation process. We've seen digital twins, which is a, a virtual uh, mirror of the, the physical environment. And that gives us you know, a much improved uh, analysis of the data and system monitoring. And things like predictive maintenance with the industry 4.0 also enables and autonomous operations allow us to identify, you know, potential issues. It could be, a, you know, fatigue in a, in a piece of equipment, um, as well as improving safety. So, um, this, you know, edge gateways, we're sending much more relevant data up to the cloud for better modeling and better productivity. Uh, but yeah, Edge definitely has its challenges. You know, I said these often are in remote locations or where there's a lack of IT. Uh, there may be harsh environments. So, you you know, connectivity back to, to uh, a central location is often troublesome. And so these Edge compute platforms really need to be adapted to give you a real time, uh, but reliable view of the uh, of your assets. Uh, it could be, a, you know, an oil or gas pumping station or it might be an electricity substation that um, you may need to make sure you've got visibility of that. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, so there's so much emerging technology and new innovations coming out these days. 
So in light of that, how does Strata stay relevant in today's, it's such a competitive industry, how do, how do you stay relevant? Yeah, I mean, you know, that, that's very key for us that we, we stay focused and, and our heritage has been in, in providing server platforms that eliminate unplanned downtime. And this is definitely, you know, our, our key differentiator going forward. But we've, you know, we've been able to adapt these platforms to cater for, say, specific edge environments. Uh, a plant may need a robust um, plant for compute platform to control its production line that can withstand dust, heat, vibration. And, uh, you know, these don't lend themselves to the typical 19 inch rack mount servers that we saw in IT. So Stratus took it on itself to design a, a new product, a ZTCH, that is a wall or a rail mount platform that so can sit on the plant floor. It's got no moving parts, but it still protects that workload and it's simple to manage and um, it's self healing. But it, it makes it ideal for these remote or industrial platform environments. And you know, this ZTC Edge device was was really paramount in Stratus getting a you know they've been awarded the the um, uh, company of the year in 2021 by Frost and Sullivan for its um, edge infrastructure and, and, and excellence in, in best practices. So I think, you know, that's a, you know, a, a, a pat on the back for something that we are able to adapt as what has been a, you know, 40 year old, um, uh, you know, technology that we've, or focus that we've had to actually make it relevant to today. Um, and we'll continue to make sure we're involved in things like security best practices with memberships of uh, organizations like the International Society of Automation that you know really looks at those security best practices. Uh, we've also participated in Industry 4.0 initiatives that um, things like the uh, Open uh, Process Automation Forum, and that's and that's very relevant again to Australia and New Zealand, and that it's really a leader in the initiatives like this with the establishment of the the test labs for in um, with the universities to test out open process automation. So you know what we've really got to make sure is that we. Um, stay relevant with our with our software partners that um, really provide a solution to the to the to the customer rather than just a, a, a hardware platform. Right. Yeah. Um, and finally, if you might, um, what in the future for Stratus? What's any projects coming in the coming years that you can um, tell us about? Yes, so certainly we're seeing in, in um, you know, in, in each of those sectors I mentioned in, in, in industrial automation, I, you know, uh, I say it's, it, we're, we're certainly being deployed now with our edge infrastructure and mining sites. Um, just picked up, a, you know, another a site in West Australia, a remote site, and it, you know, really sat well with some of our new products as ETC Edge that gave the, um, the, the operator, a, you know, a, uh, visibility of his plant and also withstood the you know the very harsh environments in West Australia where it's deployed to actually uh, make sure that the, the plant kept running and, and visibility uh, of the plant. In, in, in rail I think we'll see more and more of that um, things like automatic train control you know and um, uh, you know we're, we're involved in projects there in, in both and mostly on the on the east coast there for modernization of the rail networks and um, um, paramount in safety that the systems that they deploy are are reliable to make sure that you know uh, you know you know where the trains are and, and doors are opening at the right time etc. Um, so I think you know uh, and, and security you know security physical security um, mm -hmm. is is again um, one of the growth industries in 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 Australia and New Zealand. And I think we'll see uh, more and more of those deployed in, in, in remote locations. And, um, uh, you know, as, as physical security becomes a, a critical thing for both safety uh, um, and, uh, you know, things like pandemic uh, reasons. Cool. Awesome. Well, uh, that brings us to the end of today's IT Jam. Thanks for joining me today, Mike. Thank you very much, Nick. And thank you for your questions and, and, and taking the time to do the interview. So very appreciate that. And stay safe and well.